Now I'm here with the creators of Dark Nebula. You got Tad Pietrakovsky. <laughs> yeah, good day. And Gary Dillon. Now tell me about uh, your, I guess, comic really of Dark Nebula. Well, the Dark Nebula is something I came up with. Let's just say that uh, creators, I believe, have their own imaginary friends they bring to life. And the Dark Nebula was something that I um, nurtured through my childhood, through my uh, college years. And then uh, 41 years ago, I released my first graphic novel because I had a story I wanted to tell and you know, I just wanted to get it out there. Uh, what I didn't realise I was doing was making history at the time because um, it turned out that since I released that book, a lot of people see it as a pivotal point or a mile marker in Australian comic history um, in that um, everything that's followed since, there's a lot of people who pulled their fingers out and, and put stuff out. No sooner did I release that first book than social networking started because back then there was no Facebook it was uh, and there was no internet. It was pretty much, you know, we were all on our own doing our own thing. And I met Gary Challoner as my book was at the printers. He and I formed the nucleus of Cyclone. I brought in Glenn Lumsden, who I was trading comics with in the um, in the 70s. And he, um, I always had him in my mind as an illustrator for Cyclone. So he was our third party. And along came Dave DeVries with his Southern Squadron, fresh out of Oz Comics. And that made the quartet, that made the fab four of us. And a lot of people make that analogy. You know, four of them, four of us. And we've been, um, we, I guess you could say we set the bar for comic book production back in the 80s and the 90s. And what do you think about the, uh, the, the state or the slate of the Australian comic industry today? Well, I think it shows a lot of promise. I mean, um, some years ago, like 2007, when I relaunched Dark Nebula and I was using print-on-demand from Florida and I came out with these um, full-colour graphic novels that you could sit on a bookshelf next to Gotham by Gaslight, not presuming that I'm anywhere near as good as Gotham by Gaslight, <laughs> but you get my gist. And a lot of the people at the time, they were they, everything had devolved to the photocopied and folded mini comics and people were selling them for five bucks and here I am I turned up with these these books and they blew everyone's minds at the time and so um, what happened was everyone at that supernova uh, Sydney supernova 2007 they demanded FaceTime with me and I was happy to share what I you know how I managed to get these books because they all wanted to know how in the hell were you able to get these books at this quality? So I, I all point, I pointed them all in the direction of uh, Kablam in Florida, and I'm hoping that what happened was that um, drove a lot of more business their way. But since then, we've had print on demand um, uh, uh, come up here in Australia, and I, I think that's fantastic because now I'm getting my my books printed through Jeffrey's Printings at Milpera. Um, and they do a bang up job. I mean, um, hang on, let me just get one at random. This is Dark Nebula 9, Gary Chow on a cover, and it's um, a homage to the good old days of Marvel's Captain Marvel. It's in black and white. And I, I'm, just, I'm just really happy with the job they do because the one thing I don't want to do is compromise quality. Um, the team as it is right now is myself as a creator, Shane Foley is the artist. By the way, Shane Foley does a lot of work for Phantom. And also Dave DeVries, who was the creator of the Southern Squadron, he does the production design for the, um, for the ongoing Dark Nebula title. And his place in all of it is not lost on me because um, while I've got reasonable skills on Photoshop, Dave just aces it. And I always say to people that Dave keeps the book at its apex. This one here is Dark Nebula Southern Squadron number one. And uh, it's designed as a reintroduction of both the Dark Nebula and the Southern Squadron 
for new readers. So new readers can just come along and start with this. It's like, um, you basically, it, it's an arrow saying, start here. And it's a retelling of the origin, but it integrates the Southern Squadron in the, in the story. I'm just going to um, just show a, a couple of pages here. It's part one of three. Um, and most importantly, I would like to think that at some point, some filmmaker will come along and go, I could put that on film, because it is designed as a screenplay too. But, you know, this is, and, I, and I've got to be, I, I couldn't stress this enough. When we, when we looked at doing this project, Dark Nebula Southern Squadron, um, we, we see a lot of projects that are out there and people have their eye on the TV or movie deal. They can't, they, 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 they focus too much on that. And the one thing they fail to do is the most important thing you need to do, and that's have fun doing it. I can't stress that enough, because if people think, oh, you know, they get stars in their eyes and they, they jump to the end conclusion, they don't realise that there's a lot of things that have to go on before that. And the most important part of it is that they've got to, they've, they've got to enjoy what they're doing. And the whole thing has to be cohesive. There are a lot of comics that I've seen, and this is, uh, this is an indictment on Marvel and DC, but there's a lot of stuff I'm reading or try to read that's unreadable. But, you know, if you if you can if you can create a roller coaster ride for your reader that they um, you know it's got a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you take them and you you push the envelope, you take them thinking, oh my God, how are they going to get out of this? And they are and they are in there. They are they are in that world. You have won. You have, you have, yeah, because it's a roller coaster that hasn't jumped the tracks, and people are going, sorry, you've lost me. That, that is, that is failure, and I can't stress that enough, because um, people sometimes think that near enough is good enough. But really, with with stuff like this, you really have to, um, you want your stuff to resonate with people, because if they can't relate to it, then they're not going to, um, they're not going to. Um, uh, get anywhere. This one here, uh, this this is a story I conceived over 30 years ago. My artist Shane Foley drew it 30 years ago, and I I held on to it for that time because I didn't like the bad old days of having to go to a printer, go to a distributor, half your books get pulped, and you'd be lucky to get any money back. And when print on demand came along. I thought now, now the conditions exist for us to, um, for, for this stuff to really, you know, work. And I like to think of this as, if I can give you an analogy, with Star Trek there was the voyage home. That was the movie that switched me on to Star Trek. And I'd like to think that this story, Dinosaurs in Tasmania, is my voyage home. It's the one that will get people to go, oh, I've got to be part of this because it's the least cosmic story I put the most cosmic character through. Well, you sold me. So um, what would be your uh, socials? Like uh, how, they, how can they buy Dark Nebula? Well, that's easy. Um, I have a... Um, uh, I have a profile on Owner Indie. Um, Owner Indie. Yeah, yep. yeah. Owner Indie. Uh, so I've got my little store there. I've actually got to put a couple more books up on there. But I think, um, yeah, if people if people bear with me uh, past this weekend, um, I'll have issues nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And this one here is a replica edition of number one. It's not the first appearance of the Dark Nebula, but a lot of people have been losing their minds over the original books. A lot of people wanted to buy my original Dark Nebula ones, and I couldn't do that because if I, got, if I sold them, then I wouldn't have any, and I'd still have people asking for them. So I, I got this reprinted so people could at least have it. But there were auctions on eBay recently where my original graphic novel from 1982 went for $338 and $355 respectively. Um, and uh, the original of this Dark Nebula 1 
went for two hundred and eighty-two fifty. Wow. That's not bad for uh, books that are well. The eighty-two one's forty-one years old, and this one is probably thirty-five years old. So that's that's pretty good going. And Cyclone Australia number one, which was the second appearance of the Dark Nebula, and the first for all of the Cyclone crew. That went for um, 187.50 or so. Well, well done. So we're, we're commanding pretty decent money, and you know, I mean, people are saying, "Oh, maybe I should sell this. Maybe I should sell that." I'm, I'm telling people, in all honesty, hang on to them. Just hang on to them, because you never know. If, for argument's sake, I get tapped on the shoulder, and I get a movie or TV deal, done. <laughs> exactly. Actually, on a on a um, uh, chat group with my old schoolmates from De La Salle Marigville, now known as Kashmir College, uh, I was letting them know about these auctions and I happened to mention that one of the other guys in the group, a uh, mate of mine named Father Chris Shorrock, um, has a copy of my original graphic novel and I doubt he's ever going to part with it. And Chris chimed in and said, no fear. You know, <laughs> which is great because my, um, Chris was there while I was in the developmental stage of Dark Nebula. When I was at school at DLA Cell and Benil, that's when I was, um, you know, doing the prototypical material. And, you know, then, you know, when I hit 1982, I get the uh, the finished product out there. So, you know, it's got a bit of history to it. And I, I, I like the fact that um, with the history to it, it, it's more than just, you know, it, it, it's, it goes way past me. It's just nice to know what's come since. You know, there's been um, Cyclone, there's been Reverie. Um, Gary here is the dealer principal of Reverie, which has as many runs on the board in its own rights as Dark Nebula. And we're all back into it, you know, like 30 years on from our first burst sort of thing. And I think that's important too. Um, but And there's so many others like... All you have to do is go up and down Artist Alley and see the volume of books that people have got. And I think it's sensational. I really do. So many genres. We've got Queenie Chan here, who's the number one manga in Australia. And honestly, um, you know, it's just been a, a huge explosion since I did that first book in 82. I'm not taking all the credit for it. But I would like to think that I had something to do with it all. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much for your chat. No worries. Thanks very much. I appreciate this. And I hope I've been uh, able to um, uh, inform and educate people. Sure have. Cheers, everyone.